Hey guys, it's Midi Bia and welcome back to my channel. So today I was I was thinking that we should talk about something that I think is really important. Um, it's three things that us as national girly girls always look out for when we're buying our products. And you know, since I've when I started transitioning, all I knew was that I needed to look out for these three things. And I never really knew why I thought I, I knew they were like bad but I didn't know why okay I didn't know what role they played in the product and I didn't know why I shouldn't be putting them on my hair so this is for all those girls that are starting to transition first of all congratulations I really hope that you are enjoying your transitioning journey just take it one step at a time okay one step at a time it takes time um I mean even some of us that that have that are kind of past that transitioning stage we also some of us don't really know why we avoid these three things but we do avoid it anyway so i just thought i'd address that and kind of like clear the air and give a very very short simple explanation as to what these products are and why we need to avoid them okay so um let's just get <laughs> Let's just um, get this out of the way. So yes, I know I'm doing a natural hair video and my hair is not currently in its natural state, right? So uh, yeah, just forgive me. Um, I was in the mood for something different and yeah, there's, there's actually an explanation but let's not get into it. Let's instead get into the video. So the first product that I always look out for and that a lot of natural curly hair girls look out for is sulfate. So what is a sulfate, right? So um, a sulfate, sulfate is something that is added to products and it can be seen as a chemical whereas remember chemicals are not they aren't just like evil things that people make in the lab and stuff. So sulfates, um, chemicals can be found really naturally. I'm not exactly sure about the sulfates. I'm not sure if they chemic if they <laughs> if they are um, artificially made or if they can be found naturally like some other chemicals. So let's just talk about it as as an additive. Okay, let's talk about it as an additive. So sulfates. Is an additive that is basically a filming agent so this is a filming something that they put into your into your shampoo usually your shampoo if you find sulfates anywhere else that, that's kind of weird okay it's weird so <laughs> sulfate is a filming agent and it's also something that is used to clean it so it kind of strips away dirt and grime and these are usually even or not and these are usually found in things like our dishwashing liquid oven cleaners things that are used to really get rid of some grime to get rid of that dirt and that oil layer it's specifically aimed at oils right so in a way you, you think okay shampoo hmm makes sense to put a sulfate in the shampoo because we want to kind of clean the hair out and you know that's okay it's okay because it works okay in some people's hair especially people that have oily hair and people that kind of have like a looser curl back and that's fine they can get away with using sulfates in their shampoo however being a naturally curly girl you really want to maintain that moisture and what we rely on a lot to maintain our moisture would be our natural oils that come so that's why sulfate using sulfate to clean your hair regularly as a regular um air cleaner shampoo wouldn't really work out because you would be stripping up you'll be stripping away some of your natural oils that that you need you need it for that moisture so what what happens when you use sulfates when you cause it strips the oil it breaks um it takes away that moisture and that leaves your hair really dry and that makes it more prone to damage to do because we we try so hard to take care of our hair and to make sure that it doesn't break and then it grows and then it's like luscious and then it forever moisturized you know so i mean i do use a sulfate shampoo once in a while um especially when i feel like i have a lot of build up i will use a shampoo that has sulfate in it but otherwise i try to stay away from it or i do stay away from it how to know if you have sulfates in your product the sulfates are normally known as ammonia Sorry that I'm looking down because I have it written down here. <laughs> so it's, it's known as ammonium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, and sodium lauryl sulfate. So these are the most, the three most common ones that, that will show up in your product. And that's how you know. I mean, it's quite obvious they have sulfate at the end. So you would know, oh my gosh, there's a bit of sulfate in my product. So yeah. <laughs> Next 
product that I want to talk about is silicone. So silicone is a product that are usually found in anti like anti frizz serums, um, it can be found in shampoos, conditioners, and these are usually used to kind of smooth over the cuticle. So. <laughs> so you get the cuticle and it smooths over the cuticle so that you know you've seen those those adverts right i think it's a pantene advert where there's like a hair strand and there's like little strands sticking out of it and then as soon as they put the pantene on it just like like makes it all flat and yeah you know that advert so basically that's what a silicone does it flattens the cuticle so this is a really cool i mean it's a really cool product or cool additive um for, to prevent frizz. the bad thing about this is that it coats the cuticle actually too well it works too well guys it works too well that it prevents water and nutrients from being absorbed into your hair thus leaving your hair i mean What's the point? You have silicone in your hair, it doesn't matter what you put over it, nothing is going to be absorbed. So this is actually a good product to use when you maybe wanna um you wanna put heat on your hair because yeah, you don't want the heat to really be absorbed and to damage your hair. So that's why you will get heat protector heat protective sprays that <laughs> that um, has silicone in it. So that's the only time I would say that it's okay. Any other time, you do not want silicones on your hair. Right? Where you would find this additive in your product, it would be named as dimethicone. Dimethicone, dimethicone. So there are diff many different names, but these are the most common ones, and that's dimethicone. So anything that has steril, steril dimethicone, set, <laughs> steril dimethicone, I don't know how to pronounce these, and then you get also a modi, a modimethicone, a modimethicone, a modimethicone. Yeah, so those are like the four common ones that you would find in your product. Okay, moving on. So the last and final one, which is very common and everybody talks about is like, oh, like paraben free. What are paraben? Paraben is a preservative that is used in cosmetic products. So the reason why you need the preservative is to prevent mold and other stuff from growing in your products as the environment that we keep them in is usually a really good favorable environment for these mold and different bacteria types to grow in. So what is the problem with parabens? The problem with parabens is that there has been found a link between parabens and cancer. Another thing about parabens is that it is as an estrogen and this can this can disrupt your hormonal process. So um, even though there's a lot of research going, there isn't really research that fully proves that parabens are directly linked to cancer. There, there is some speculation about it and if I was you, I mean, I would rather just avoid it. So one of the things about parabens is that you get different types of parabens. The most common ones are ethyl paraben and propyl paraben. I mean, it's quite obvious the paraben is in the name, so you would know that it is a paraben. Some of the parabens, according to some research article that I read, um, some of the parabens are more, are more disruptive than other parabens, but I would rather just steer away from it in total because with the, with constant use of these products, it can cause build up and thus have a more serious effect on your health than what you would, than when using it less or not using it at all. Um, I really think it's important for when you're buying your products, especially if you are transitioning, you really want to avoid these products because your hair, it's you starting out and you really want to give your hair the best natural, natural and organic products that you can find. Um, that won't be more damaging on your hair because you I mean you're basically rehabilitating your hair and these three ingredients are not going to get you anywhere concerning your natural finding your curl pattern finding your natural texture any of that so rather just stay away from them and yeah you'll find that your curls are popping soon enough I unfortunately did not do this when I started transitioning. I really didn't care. I mean, I still got to where I wanted it. Even my hair wasn't as healthy as I wanted it to be. Till this point, I still do um, kind of run off to the pretty packaging and I just take the stuff and I don't even look at the ingredients. But I do I do actually look out for the products that say paraben and sulfate free, but I never actually check 
if it's silicone free yeah and i feel like silicone is actually one of the baddies in this list of in this three in this trio of, of of additives because i wouldn't want to um prevent my hair from getting the moisture that it needs so yeah i hope you guys learned something from this video and that it actually answered your questions or like kind of took that whole mystery away from these three additives that you are always looking out for in your products and how to actually spot them in their like hidden language i'm no chemist um i did not ever do chemistry in <laughs> in high school and a bit of it in university as well so yeah i really hope this was helpful and let me know what you guys think and if there are any other um chemicals or additives that you guys want to talk about let me know in the comments down below and maybe i can make a more informed video i just didn't want to make it boring i didn't want to talk about the chemical structures and different article research so yeah um i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next video bye